Hello peoples, this is Teacher Patrick. Today, we are going to conduct our physics lesson on characteristics of an environment. It feels weird not to have any pupils in the classroom right now, but I'll try to make the class lively by bringing in some examples, okay? Let's run through. Our environment is made up of all the living and non-living things around us that affect our lives. For example, let's talk about living things. Animals, plants, and people. Let's talk about non-living things. Sunlight. Sunlight is our main source of light and heat energy, so definitely it is also one of the characteristics that do affect the environment. Water, air, and temperature. We'll be spending more time to talk about them later on, okay? Let me read through. Each habitat supports different populations of organisms. What does this mean? Remember last week, we learned what is a habitat? A habitat is a place where organisms live. What about populations? A population is a group of animals of the same kind that live together and reproduce at a particular place. Do you remember that? It's inside the book, okay? Please flip through the Jordan book, please. Okay? This is because the characteristics of the environment in each habitat are unique. What do I mean by unique? Let's compare leaf litter habitats and a few habitats. Do you think the populations of organisms will be the same kind? I don't think so. In a leaf litter habitat, I give you some examples. Remember? Termites, wood lice, ants, perhaps. But in a few habitats, very likely you will be finding, for example, zebras or maybe some grasshoppers around, okay? These characteristics affect the organisms living in a habitat. So that's why the characteristics of a habitat is important. And based on what they have, they will attract a certain kind of organisms. That's why their characteristics is really important. Any, chance, any changes in these characteristics can affect their survival. So, for example, a sudden change in temperature definitely will affect the organisms living down there, right? Now, I'm going to list down a total of seven characteristics, or we can call it factors, that will affect the environment. So, I have pupils who give me an idea, they say, Teacher Patrick, please remember in this manner, low fats, L-O-W-F-A-T-S. By the way, please don't go and memorize the factors. During the exam, if they ever want to test you on factors, the questions will be phrased in a way that is quite easy to uh, understand. Okay, so don't go and memorize, don't waste time. How do these factors affect the organisms living in the habitat? So let's start off with light, okay? So light, do not forget where is the main source of light? From the sun, right? So light is an important factor all living things need to survive. Plants need sunlight to make food during photosynthesis. Without sunlight, plants and other organisms that depend on plants for food will die. The amount of sunlight also affects the temperature in the habitat. Thus, this determines the type of organisms that live in the habitat. Always remember, just now I said, the main source of light comes from the sun. And also, the main source of heat also comes from the sun. So, if a place receives lots of sunlight, naturally, this place will also have a higher temperature. Let's look back at few habitats and leaf litter habitats. Few habitats, I'm sure, on the surface of everywhere, it's going to be hot, 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 right? And of course, bright as well. What about under the pile of leaf litter? Cooling, damp, dark. Am I right? We went through this last week. So always base it on what we have gone through. Teacher Pashi will always try to make you recall, okay? Now, certain animals need sunlight to keep their bodies warm. This Animals include frogs, lizards, and turtles. Now, in this list down here, 
you will realize that they are either amphibians or reptiles. Now, amphibians and reptiles are cold-blooded animals. It means that their body temperature changes according to the surrounding. When the surrounding temperature increases, their body temperature also increases. Now, here comes the question. I'd like you to ponder on this. When we do our uh, online conferencing, I'll be asking this question again. I need you to tell me the answer. So here's the question. During exam papers, on, on, on some exam papers, uh, you definitely get to see questions like this. They will show a monitor lizard on the ground. Two legs on the ground while the other two legs are lifted off the ground. Can you tell me why is this so? I give you a clue. In terms of energy, in terms of heat energy, in terms of heat, okay? Go ahead and think in terms of heat and then let's discuss on the online conferencing, okay? They need the warmth from sunlight to obtain energy for their activities. For example, life processes. Do you still remember what I mentioned about life processes? What are life processes? To grow. What else? To respire. To reproduce. Okay? Are there animals like earthworms that would like to avoid light because they are sensitive to it? While one spectrum of the organisms prefer light. The other spectrum of organisms would prefer dark places. Okay? So, light, we also have to know about the different intensity of light. Okay? So, they prefer to live in dark and moist places. 